Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer do-it-yourself upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm gonna be working with an MSI gaming laptop. I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot it if at startup it's giving you a no boot device error or boot device not found, boot device not installed, something like that, your computer's not fully booting up. I'll show you how to troubleshoot it. As always, guys, please remember to like and share if this video is helpful, if you think it can help someone else out. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer repair. And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further and leave a small donation, I'll show you a couple ways you can do that at the end of the video. Okay, so now let's get into the project. Make sure your computer's off, and I'll show you how to start. Keep in mind, guys, with the troubleshooting steps that I'm going to show you, I'm going to show them to you in this video in a certain order that may not necessarily be the order you want to do them in for your computer and your situation. For example, if you know that you just had a failed Windows update before your computer shut down and this issue started, that may mean you want to try to uninstall the last update or try the repair or restore options in BIOS that I'm not gonna show you first. Only you know what's happened with your computer, so watch the troubleshooting steps that I'm gonna show you, and you may wanna rearrange them um, in what's more likely to help your situation. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to reseat your hard drive. Different components in a motherboard do come loose, hard drive, RAM, these things come loose sometimes, and you could be getting this issue because your hard drive is simply loose. So the first thing I'm gonna have you do is get into your computer, unplug the hard drive, blow it out a little bit, make sure it's clean, plug it in, make sure it's secure, um, and this goes for a hard drive or a solid state drive. Um, also try doing that with your RAM, unplug it, plug it back in, make sure it's secure. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do that in this MSI now, how to access those components. Okay, so my computer's off, obviously. It's flipped over, the power adapter's been removed. Uh, now I'm gonna open up this bottom case. Most MSIs like this don't have those easy access panels to access components uh, like other computers have, so we have to remove this bottom case. Keep in mind things like this, guys. This is my factory seal. Oftentimes, this will void all or part of your warranty if you go into the computer, so please keep that in mind before doing any sort of DIY repair. If your computer is under warranty, uh, you may be better off to preserve that warranty and, and, and avoid DIY and instead um, apply for a warranty repair. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws. I got two in the corners or sorry, four in each of the four corners. I got a screw there, I got two here, and I got two here, and I got two down by the uh, touchpad, and of course, that nasty one right in the middle. So I'll go ahead and remove all these now. As you notice, guys, my computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. Uh, either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas for keeping your workspace safe and limiting the chance that you have of damaging any internal components. If you want any ideas for any tools or supplies that I use in my shop, I'll have a link above and below in the description to my Amazon store. It'll give you some suggestions on things I use that you may find helpful. On my Amazon store, there are several sections here. Repair tools is one of them. Uh, here you can find the common hand tools that I use along with things like anti-static mats and bracelets that help prevent you from damaging your computer. Okay, so now that all my screws are up, I'm gonna take my small metal flat pry tool and I'm gonna go along the seam and try to pry up this bottom case. Be careful when using these. Uh, don't stab it too far in because there are components in, in there and you could damage something. Put it in as little as possible, just enough to give you some leverage to uh, bend up the bottom case. Okay, so after that's done, uh, I had a little bit of trouble over here. It was a little stiff, but again, I just went nice and slow and, and popped it up a little, popped it up a little, popped it up a little in, inch by inch, and that comes off. There are no components or anything on here that you have to unhook, so that's a nice easy model to get into. Okay, so here we are, the inside of our computer. There's your fan, your heatsink assembly, going to your CPU and your GPU, solid state drive, RAM, battery, um, additional hard drive slot. So this is generally what you're looking at inside of your MSI computer. Um, keep in mind, not all MSI models will be exactly like this. So if you guys want help with your exact model, if something didn't look just right, um, or if you'd like some help, leave me a comment and I'll try to help you out. 
Before touching anything inside the computer, the first thing to do in any computer repair is to either remove or at least unplug your battery. We want as little power running through this computer as possible so as not to damage anything. Okay, so here's your battery again. It's plugged in right there. I'll zoom in a little for you. Okay, so there's your battery. It's plugged into your motherboard right here. If you guys notice, this port right here has a space cut out of it where a section of, of this plug is sticking out. That's supposed to help you grab that and slide it out. You never want to pull things out by the wires because wires can come unplugged from the plug very easily. So I'm going to take a small plastic pry tool. Anytime you're working in a computer, guys, plastic is obviously better. I'm going to put that plastic tool right in there and try to slide it out. So that's not working so well. That seems pretty tight and I don't want to completely damage that. So instead, I'm going to take my fingernails, either side of the port, sort of slide it out like that. Wiggle it out nice and slow. Again, avoid pulling on the wires. Wiggle it out. Okay, so that finally came out, but boy was that a pain to get out. I, I kind of wasn't prepared for it to be that much of a pain. Uh, that took a lot of effort to slowly slide uh, back and forth, back and forth. I, I kind of went back and forth between my fingernails and this, trying to get it out. Um, again, avoid pulling on the wires. You're better off just taking forever to get that out. But now the battery is unplugged. And then to plug it back in, you would obviously just slide it back in there. Yeah, much easier to plug in than it is to unplug. So there's your RAM right there. You've got two ports. In this model, I only have one stick of RAM. Uh, RAM is held in by these two metal pry arms on either side. It's very standard way that RAM is, is set up. To release the RAM, we're going to pull apart those metal arms nice and gently, and the RAM stick should just pop up. Just like that, although it usually doesn't pop out like that. As you can see here, guys, there's one long port and one short port. Uh, that means you can't flip this over incorrectly and put it in. It's got to go in one way. To put RAM back in, you just put it in there, make sure it's nice and flush, and then you press down and it clicks in place. Just like that. So there's your solid state drive right there. Kind of easy to remove. It's held in by one screw. Um, after that screw is removed, you just slide it out. So as you can see, reseating, uh, unplugging and plugging back in RAM and a solid state drive is fairly simple once you get access to it. Uh, and most of us with MSIs will have solid state drives, not hard drives. If you do have an older model with a hard drive and you want to uh, get help on how to unplug it and plug it back in, if you can't figure that out once you have access to it, there'll be a video link above. I'll also include it in the description showing you how you can reseat a, a hard drive. But again, most of us with these MSIs, we're going to have solid state drives. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you, if it wasn't the hard drive just being loose, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot some BIOS issues. Um, you may be seeing this problem for BIOS reasons, maybe for operating system reasons, maybe for hardware reasons like the hard drive or, or RAM, but I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot some BIOS issues now. So shut your computer off, make sure it's plugged in. I'll show you how to access BIOS and do some things with the startup options. Okay, so to get into BIOS on most MSI laptops, you're going to hit power like I'm going to do and immediately start tapping on your delete key. If your delete key doesn't work, guys, try your escape key. And then if that doesn't work, try running through your function keys because some models will be different. But most of you will be like me. It'll be your delete key. So I'm going to go ahead and hit power and then immediately start tapping on my delete key. And we're waiting for the logo to come up, but I just start hitting it right away. And there's our MSI BIOS. So first of all, guys, to move around in BIOS, some of you, as I do, will have use of your mouse. That makes it a lot easier if you do. Uh, there's a key here, usually on the right, that tells you how to move around otherwise. Your arrow keys, your tab keys, it'll tell you what plus and minus and enter do. Um, all different ways you can move around, select uh, values, and change them. Um, so first of all, try to figure out how you can move around. If you can't use your keyboard for some reason, or if your mouse is not like mine, if you can't use it, guys, try an external mouse or an external USB. They'll usually plug into your USB port and you'll be able to use those in BIOS if for some reason you can't use your own computer's um, uh, keyboard and, and mouse. So the first thing I'm going to have you try, guys, Right here, your date and time, your system date and time. Make sure your system date and time is correct. Believe it or not, if your system date and time is not correct, 
It could stop your computer from starting right. It, it could interfere with BIO starting up, which of course would interfere with, with your operating system. So first thing to do, change your date and time, make sure it's correct, save and exit, continue booting up. If this solves your problem, but you find out you have to do this every single time you start your computer, um, and every time you go in, your system date and time is not correct, uh, you may want to consider reseeding uh, or replacing your CMOS battery. Um, there'll be a link above, and I'll have the video link below in the description how you can access a CMOS battery on motherboards that use it. Not all motherboards have it, so if that's an issue with yours, that's something you, you would want to look into. If that doesn't help you out and that is not your problem, your system date and time is fine, let's move on. Let's show you one other thing in BIOS. I'm going to go arrow over twice to my boot tab. Um, keep in mind, guys, not all BIOS is the same. You may have to look around to find these options that I'm showing you, but you should have them. Um, so after I've arrowed over twice, I'm in my boot tab. And if you go down right here, you'll see boot mode select. And right now it's on UEFI. Um, guys, if your computer is not booting up, I want you to change this. Um, right now it says UEFI. So yours may say UEFI. Yours may say legacy. Whatever yours says, change it to the other one. So if my MSI wasn't booting up, I would take this, I would hit enter, and instead of having UEFI, I would up and I would select legacy. Um, also, you can try UEFI with CSM if you have that option. But So basically, if you're on UEFI again, change to legacy, hit enter, continue try to boot up. Those of you who are on legacy, switch over to UEFI, um, continue to try to boot up. So that's the other thing we'll check in BIOS is if your boot mode select is on the wrong selection, change it, try to start up, see what happens. Some of you, when you try to change this, you'll get a warning saying that secure boot is on. And as long as secure boot is on, you won't be able to change this value. If that's you, um, arrow over to the right, check out your security tab and there's your secure boot. Right now it's enabled, you would go ahead, hit enter, disable it, and then try to change. Another thing you could try guys, if neither one of those worked out, something else we can try in BIOS. If I go all the way to the end under save and exit, right down here, save changes and, and, and reset, discard reset, right down at the bottom, load optimized defaults. That's basically a factory reset for your BIOS. Uh, perhaps BIOS options changed, uh, maybe you changed something you didn't intend to. It led to a boot loop issue where you can't boot up. You would try this. Try resetting your BIOS uh, back to factory settings, restarting, seeing if that boots up your, your computer. If changing those settings in BIOS does not help your situation, there's one more thing we can try using your startup options, and that's going for your recovery options. To access the recovery options, we're going to hit power. Immediately start tapping on F3. These are your recovery options for Windows 10. Uh, if your computer has Windows 11, it'll look a little different. So these are your recovery options right here. I'm going to arrow down to troubleshoot. And here, reset this PC, uh, reset MSI factory settings. Those are a couple options. Um, this will remove all your personal files and reinstalls Windows. Uh, restore MSI factory settings, remove all user data, reinstall factory settings, or down at advanced options, uh, you have startup repair. This is something you can do um, that's, that's not as drastic as a reset or a reinstall. You can try that. Also down here, uh, system restore on the bottom right, you can try that. Uh, so the startup repair and the system restore options are really good if you think it's an operating system issue. Um, also for some of you, uh, some of you may have had a working computer that's running fine. You see a Windows update and it either fails or it asks you to restart and then you're stuck in a boot loop. Um, if you think that a Windows update could be the problem, in addition to trying those two, you could try it. But first, try this one on the top right, uninstall updates. And hopefully if it is an update issue, that will erase that. It'll get your computer started up again. Okay, so if it's not a BIOS issue, um, if we've tried reseeding the hard drive and everything seems secure, nothing looks damaged, um, it may not be a hardware issue, 
uh, now we're left with possibly an operating system issue. And if you weren't able to use the recovery options or the restore options, uh, you weren't able to factory reset, um, you're kind of left at this point with reinstalling your operating system. So there'll be video links below in the description on how to reinstall Windows 10. Uh, there'll be another one how to reinstall Windows 11 depending on what you want, but that's kind of where you're at. If it wasn't BIOS, it wasn't hardware, it's operating system, and if you can't reset it, you have to reinstall it. So I hope this video took you through the troubleshooting process. I hope it, it was pretty clear. Um, hopefully you can find out what your issue is. If you need any help with anything, if something didn't look just right, or if you're kind of lost, uh, check out the FAQs below in the description, guys. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I try to get to those at least a couple times a day. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to support the channel a little further and leave a small donation, I'll show you a couple ways you can do that now. First, right below the video to the right-hand side, you'll see the Super Thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your Cash App. Find me at dollar sign PC Helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note.